Welcome back to part three of my series on installing a new cylinder head on your Model A Ford. In our pre-flight checklist, we covered all the areas you need to check before you begin the installation. In part one, we covered assembly of the water pump and the fan and how to install the studs. In part two, we got our new head installed and tightened down and we installed the distributor, the spark plugs, fan belt, and the radiator hose. In this video, we're going to cover head gasket break-in. Now, some, some folks don't like to use the term break-in. Uh, I've also heard gasket retorque, gasket relaxation. Eh, they all mean the same thing. When you torque this nut down to a certain number of foot-pounds, now that force, that clamping force, is only going to hold steady if the pieces that you're clamping down stay exactly where they are. If they expand or contract, then the force changes. And when you put a new cylinder head through its first heat cycle, meaning you start the engine, you run it up to operating temperature, and then you cool it down again, a couple things happen that cause these pieces to compress. And these are called embedment and creep. So first, what the heck is embedment? Well, so let's say I've got two surfaces that look perfectly flat and I clamp them together. Take a bolt and clamp them together. Now, on a microscopic level, they're not perfectly flat. They look like this. They've got peaks and valleys, and so, uh, and they don't meet, the peaks and valleys don't meet exactly right. So there's this microscopic gap between them. And as the force on these surfaces increases, right, as I clamp these tighter and tighter together, then these uh, microscopic peaks deform. They kind of round over and it starts to look like this. And the more clamping force is on the two pieces, the more they deform against each other and the smaller that gap gets. And this gap can, the difference between no pressure and, the clamp, and you know, having the bolt on them, uh, that can be a couple thousandths of an inch, which is more than enough to throw off a torque reading. So as the cylinder head heats up, it presses harder, it's expanding, it presses harder against the gasket, the gasket presses harder against the block, the head presses against the head nut. All these components embed a tiny bit into each other. And those tiny bits add up. And when it cools back down, the entire joint takes up slightly less space. And that means the torque value on the nut isn't the same as it was before you started. All right, so what is creep? Well, creep is basically gasket compression. So if I take a gasket and I put it under compression, under a compressive force for a while, gradually, especially if there's heat cycling and everything's compressing, expanding, gradually it's gonna get thinner and thinner and thinner as the molecules in the gasket rearrange themselves under strain. The thicker the gasket, the more its thickness will change under load. And different gasket materials also compress differently. So, for example, so here's a table from, this is from Best Gasket, the company that makes the gasket that I'm using. This table shows all their gaskets, it shows the uncompressed width of each gasket and then the compressed width. The difference between the uncompressed and the compressed width is the creep. So my gasket is the 509G, that's a graphite gasket. So the creep for this type is 0.058 uncompressed minus 0.055 compressed gives a creep of 0.003, so three thousandths of an inch. Uh, now that's really not much at all. To tighten a head nut by three thousandths of an inch, that's about a 20 degree turn, right? So that's like, that's all. If you, so to, to torque a graphite gasket, you know, from the uncompressed state to the compressed state, to retorque that, you've got to retorque three thousandths of an inch, plus the embed, but we're just focusing on the creep right now. So now let's look at the 509C the copper gasket, same exact gasket design, just in copper. So the 509C starts out at 80 thousandths and it compresses to 52 thousandths. 
So that gives a total creep of 0 0.028, so 28 thousandths. That's a lot more. That's nine times more than the graphite gasket. And that means to take all the slack out of a copper gasket once it's compressed, you've got to give more than half a turn to the head nut. That's 200 degrees of turn to the head nut to bring it to get down from the uncompressed to the compressed state. So to recap, the reason that gasket retorque or break in or whatever is so important is that between embedment and creep and other factors like the fact that when the head warms up, it actually stretches the stud by, I don't know, another thousandth of an inch. All those factors taken together mean that you can lose 30% or more of the clamping force on the cylinder head after a single heat cycle, especially if you have a copper gasket. The solution is to do a controlled break-in. So you're gonna start the engine, turn it on, let it idle until it reaches operating temperature. Now on mine, that's 160 degrees. Remember, I've got that thermostat here in the upper radiator hose. Once you reach operating temperature, you turn it off and you allow it to cool. Then you retorque the head nuts using the same sequence as we used in part two. Remember that star arrangement? Now, if you have a copper gasket, because those compress so much, I personally, I would retorque when the engine is still a little warm, you know, like warm, like you can keep your hand on it. If you have a graphite gasket, which is what I've got, I think it's okay to let it cool down all the way. Now, those are my evidence-free opinions. If you want to have a different rule, it's probably fine. The main concern is you don't want to let the head get so loose that it starts to leak. Remember from part two that we filled the cooling system. All this here, this water jacket is filled with pure water. So if I do spring a leak, I won't get coolant into places that it's hard to get it out of. All right, let's start this up. Sounds good. I'm gonna back out of the garage a little bit so I don't breathe carbon monoxide. The first thing you want to do after you get it started is check for leaks. And there are three fluids you're concerned about, oil, water, and gasoline. You wanna make sure none of those is collecting in a puddle under the engine. So, check around the radiator, check around the carb, look underneath, nothing puddling, it's good. Okay, now after the engine warms up, this is a great time to fiddle with your carburetor adjusting screws. So you've basically got two things. You've got your throttle stop and your idle mixture. Um, this is a Marvel car, but this Zenith has the same. Throttle stop and idle mixture. You want to fiddle with those until, until you're getting that nice putt, 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 putt sound. Now we can use an IR thermometer to check the temperature of the cylinder head. We want it to get up to at least 160 to 170 degrees before we turn it off. If you don't have a thermometer, you can just let it run about 10 minutes. So let's see here. Yeah, okay. 174. So this is perfect. You can see it getting cooler as we go up toward the radiator. But right here on the cylinder head, 170. So perfect, perfect operating temperature. All right, I think we're ready to turn it off. Okay, so the engine is now cool. So we're ready to re-tighten the head nuts. And what I'm gonna do, what I've done here is mark the position, hopefully you can see, 
I've marked the position of each head nut with just a line with this little wet erase marker. Each of these with a line going in toward the center. And it doesn't particularly matter how you mark them. You can mark them any way you want. The idea is you want to establish a reference point so that when you've retorqued everything, you can see how much you had to tighten them. And what you want is to get to a point where you're, you retorque now, you're going to drive it again, retorque it again if necessary, and you want to get to a point where the lines remain in the same place. So I'm going to loosen this nut a little bit, torque it back to 50 or 55 or whatever my baseline is, and I want this mark to come back to almost exactly where it is right now. And if I get to a point where all 14 head nuts are coming back to almost exactly the same spot with this reference mark, then I know that the head is ready and I can stop retorquing. So now I've marked all my head nuts and I'm going to uh, retorque them exactly the way I tighten them in part two and then we'll see where all these lines line up. I'm expecting that either it'll be very small change or no change because this is a graphite gasket so as, uh, as we talked about earlier, it's not going to compress much, if at all. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, so about 20 minutes later, gone through and retorqued everything. Let's see what we got. So this row here, you can see almost no change in the position of the reference point. Similarly with these, almost all exactly or within about 10 degrees of where they started. The main ones that changed were these two on the water outlet. And that is probably because there's that extra gasket, right? So it's not just the graphite gasket, there's that extra copper asbestos gasket. So that one is continuing to compress. So these I might want to keep checking uh, after my next few trips, but the rest of these, they're done. They've been retorqued. Uh, they've come back to the exact same spot, and these are done. This head, this gasket is broken in. This head is torqued. This thing's ready to get on the road.